So now that we've talked about public and private blockchains, what those terms mean, and again, you can think of that as permission versus permissionless blockchains, uh, we can talk about some of the differences and what each different type of platform aims to provide. And so public blockchains are really good for scenarios where protecting the anonymity of users is important or adds value to the solution. And they're really great platforms for solutions where all users should be treated equally. And we can see this because most public blockchains right now are used to support cryptocurrencies. And this is a real great use case. Uh, with a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, etc., uh, we don't want to have any permissioning or, or role-based access. Anybody should be able to own some Bitcoin. Anybody should be able to trade it with anybody else. And it's not necessarily important that we know who the participants in any transaction are. And so that leads to an open, permissionless model with full transparency. This is very different in the corporate world where we see private blockchains being adopted at scale because the concerns are the opposite. In a corporate scenario, in a business scenario, anonymity is a bad thing. I want to know exactly who all the participants are and I need to know who they are because I don't want full transparency. I don't want to share all my business data with all the participants in my business network or the general public at large. I want to control who sees what type of information under what circumstances and I also want to control who's able to contribute that information onto the blockchain. So I might use a private blockchain solution to manage supplier-vendor relationships where only myself and my suppliers can see the price that I'm paying for a certain item. Only a particular supplier gets to see the details of the contract that I have with them and not the details of a contract I have with any other suppliers. And I may wish to share some of this high-level macro data with consumers so that they can see the origins of the products they're buying, but of course I'd want to hide the financial financials behind all that. So when we look at how these two solution types differ, we see that public blockchains tend to focus more on B2C or business to consumer scenarios, uh, whereas private blockchain offerings like Hashgraph, Hyperledger really lend themselves well to B2B scenarios, supply chain, value chain relationships, or creating any kind of shared infrastructure between enterprises. Uh, so just understand that while there's a big misconception that these are competing offerings, they're really not. And many real world use cases use components of both. It's important to understand the difference between them. And it really all starts with identity management. So when you're thinking in your head about public versus private blockchain, understand that it all begins with identity management. And in a private blockchain, I know who all the participants are right from the beginning. In the public blockchain, again, I don't know who those participants are. And that's not to say that I can't build a permission solution on a public platform, uh, but myself, my architects, and my developers are going to have to develop the logic and the mechanisms behind identity management. So that's public and private blockchain, two very, very different animals. Uh, they serve vastly different purposes, and as you start to dig into a lot of real-world use cases, what you're going to find is many use cases make use of both types of blockchain integrated seamlessly.